human-alien hybrid escapes. In the sterile, cold embrace of a room shielded from the world's eyes, Ilara, test subject four, lay confined. The metallic clink of instruments and the soft hum of computers filled the air, punctuated by the muffled footsteps of white-coated figures. Strapped to a clinical examination table, her limbs felt the chill of the metal through thin sheets. Above her, harsh lights cast an unnatural glow on her skin, highlighting the vivid, surreal hue of her eyes, eyes that seemed to flicker with specks of stardust. The room was a flurry of activity. Scientists and military personnel came and went, discussing her as if she were a rare specimen, perhaps a butterfly pinned under glass. Their words were clinical and detached, genetic anomaly, potential applications, unprecedented abilities, echoed off the concrete walls. Approaching her was a young scientist, his demeanor one of intrigued scrutiny. He peered closely at Alara, his gaze trying to unravel the mysteries reflected in her extraordinary eyes. Little did he know, he was but a step away from becoming the first proof she needed, discovering her newfound abilities. Their eyes locked, and a subtle shift occurred. Alara's gaze deepened, drawing the young man into a vortex of silent, compelling force. His clipboard dropped, unnoticed, as he stood transfixed, like a marionette with its strings suddenly cut. The moment lingered, barely a minute, but in that minute the world shifted imperceptibly. Shaking his head, the scientist stepped back, attributing the odd lapse to a trick of his mind or a fleeting dizziness. Yet, as he retreated, Alara's lips curved into a small smile. The power was hers, real and undeniable, and it whispered a chance at freedom. Now she knew she could sway them bend their wills with nothing more than a look. Her eyes closed briefly as she embraced this revelation. The chains that bound her felt lighter, the path ahead clearer. Tomorrow she would try and escape. As the military complex began to quiet, Alara lay in her cell, planning. With every passing hour she refined her newfound ability, a skill that had once seemed like a mere anomaly but now shimmered within her like a weapon honed for battle. She practiced, subtly, cautiously, on anyone who came too close, anyone whose gaze she could catch without raising suspicion. Her targets were chosen with strategic precision, guards with access cards dangling from their belts, scientists who entered codes into secured doors. Each encounter was brief, a fleeting connection of eyes that left her subjects dazed, compliant just long enough for Alara to make mental notes of their passwords. As night descended upon the complex, a deep, resonating calm settled over its sprawling structure. It was time. Alara's heart pounded, not with fear, but with the drumbeat of freedom calling her forward. She waited until the changing of the guards, a routine she had memorized, down to the last footstep. Then, with the stealth of a shadow, she began her escape. The first guard turned the corner, and their eyes met. His confusion lasted only a moment before his expression slackened. His mind clouded under her influence. She slipped by, his keycard in her hand. The next guard was just as easy, a young recruit whose dazed state left him blinking at the empty hallway she had already left behind. Alarms blared, too late, their shrill cries slicing through the facility as doors slammed and lights flashed. But Alara was a ghost. She darted through dimly lit corridors, past guards too slow to react, their minds scrambled by the brief, bewildering lock of her gaze. Her breaths came in sharp, silent gasps as she approached the final door, the one that led to the dark expanse of freedom beyond the complex. With one last deep look into the camera above, she blinked slowly, deliberately. For a moment, the operator behind it started blinking away his sudden sleepiness. That moment was all she needed. The door clicked open, and the cold night air rushed to greet her. Alara stepped into the darkness, her feet finally feeling the earth, the real, unbounded earth beneath them. Behind her, the chaos continued, voices shouting, feet running, a sign saying, High Security Area, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Ahead lay the woods dark and inviting, ready to hide her from those who would seek to cage her again. Alara jumped a fence, 
and entered the dense woods of Ohio under the glow of a pale, indifferent moon. Her breaths were sharp, tearing at her throat with each gasping inhale as she plunged into the underbrush, the stiff branches clawing at her clothes. Behind her, the chaos of her escape erupted into a full-scale manhunt. The air vibrated with the barking of dogs, their handlers shouting commands that grew fainter as she burrowed further into the thicket. Above, the sky was breached by helicopters. Their spotlights swept through the darkness like probing fingers, slicing between trees, illuminating patches of the forest floor and stark, fleeting moments of daylight. Each sweep of the light sent a surge of adrenaline through Alara, pushing her to move faster. Her ability to daze, once a river of potential, now trickled with fatigue. Each use drained a bit more of her strength, leaving her increasingly reliant on her primal instincts and the natural cover of the dark woods. She darted from shadow to shadow, her movements a dance of survival honed by the raw edge of desperation. As she navigated the undergrowth, the helicopters adjusted their patterns. Their pilots noticed the signs of her passage through the rustling leaves. The light swept closer, the cold glare flashing over her, forcing her to freeze in place, a statue amidst the foliage, barely daring to breathe. Alara's heart pounded, a drumbeat loud enough, she feared, to betray her hiding spot. She knew she could not outrun the helicopters. The realization settled in with the cold night air. She needed to find shelter, a place to hide until the search for her cooled down. With a burst of renewed energy, she pushed forward, her eyes scanning the darkness for any haven, a fallen log, an overgrown hollow, anything that might conceal her form from the relentless search above. The forest, with all its perils, had become her ally in this game of hide-and-seek, the stakes of which were her very freedom. Alara stumbled upon a weather-beaten barn, its wood aged to a soft gray, standing as a sentinel in the clearing. She was exhausted, each step a monumental task, her body aching from the relentless flight through the undergrowth. With the last of her energy, she pushed open the heavy barn door and collapsed on a pile of old hay. She awakened. The barn was dimly lit by the early morning light that seeped through cracks in the wooden planks. The air was thick with the musky scent of hay and a faint trace of tobacco smoke. In a corner, the soft, rhythmic snoring of an occupant filled the space. Ilara's eyes adjusted to the dim interior, and she noticed the figure of an old man reclining in a makeshift hammock. Yet, as Ilara's quiet gasp broke the stillness, the old man stirred, his senses attuned to the presence of another. He murmured a gentle greeting his voice warm with a rustic timbre, mistaking her for a lost soul seeking shelter. My name is Bick Rocker, and there's peace here for those who need it, the old man said, his words slow and thoughtful. He did not ask for her story. He did not need to to offer his kindness. He perceived only a weary traveler, and in a simple gesture he offered her sanctuary. The man, Bick Rocker, was almost blind his vision clouded by cataracts that reduced the world to shadows and light. Settling back into his hammock with a gentle sway, Bick addressed Alara with a warm, reassuring tone. You're welcome to stay as long as you'd like, he offered. There are just a couple of rules for anyone helping out around here. Help an old man out when you see he needs it and leave him be when he's catching some Z's. Follow those and we'll get along just fine. He paused chuckling softly as he nodded toward a large pot-bellied pig near the entrance of the barn. And don't mind Cletus. He gets a bit nosy, but he's harmless. Bick's eyes closed once more, and he drifted back into a peaceful slumber, leaving Alara to contemplate her new life. Alara lay there, listening to the old man's breathing return to its steady pace, pondering her next move. Life, she realized, was more than survival. It was about finding moments of kindness, fleeting connections that spoke of belonging. Sitting here, in this old barn with the old man who asked for no explanations, gave her a glimmer of hope. Alara sat quietly in the barn, the soft snores of Bick providing a comforting background noise as she pondered her precarious place in the world. Being neither fully human nor fully alien, she felt a drift between two realities both potentially hostile. 
Humans had already shown their intent to exploit her, and though she had never met her alien kin, she suspected their intentions might not be much different. This sanctuary offered by Bick, simple and genuine, stood in stark contrast to her life so far. It was enticing, a rare offer of peace and acceptance that tempted her deeply, offering a semblance of belonging in a world where she otherwise saw none. As she lay in the quiet sanctuary of the barn, Elara allowed herself to dream, dreams of days filled with simple joys, tending to the farm, listening to big stories, living far from the prying eyes of those who sought to use her. In this humble, unassuming place she could belong, maybe not fully and maybe not forever, but for now it was enough. This is not goodbye, nor the end. Until the story continues, my friends, be an rocker.